Hey, welcome to Understanding Gradle. In this and the following two videos, I'll talk about testing with Gradle. In the examples I've used to demonstrate other Gradle features, I already used tests from time to time, but we never really talked about how it's working in detail. As we've already seen, test code can be placed into the source test folder by default. This is because the Java plugin already sets up a source set called test for us, where we can place the code. By setting off the source set, Gradle automatically adds tests to compile the code in the source set, which is in this case the compile test Java task, and a task to copy resources into the right place if resources are placed in the test resources folder. Then on top of this, the Java plugin registers a task called test, which uses a task implementation, also called test, that's delivered with Gradle Core. The test task here is the only test specific thing. Everything else is just standard source set setup. See my video about that topic. The test task is configured with detail from the source set, like the class path and the place where the compiled test code is located. As you see, the Java plugin does a certain default setup for us for testing. Historically, however, you always need to configure something on top to make things work. That's why Gradle recently introduced a new concept called JVM test suites that makes it simple to apply more modern testing conventions. We'll now first explore how to make tests working without using the test suite concept to understand what's going on in the background and also to give you the option to configure it this way if you still have to work with an older Gradle version. Afterwards, we'll look how test suites can simplify the setup. So let's start by putting some test code into our test source folder. To write and run test code in Java, you always need a test framework and an engine. Due to the way how the test task works, which we'll look at in detail in the next video, Gradle needs to support the test engine you choose in the test task. The most well-known test engine and framework in Java is JUnit, which is supported in two versions, the rather old but still widely used JUnit 4 and the modern and flexible JUnit 5. By default, the test task is configured to use JUnit 4 because when it was initially created, JUnit 5 didn't exist yet. So let's start by writing a JUnit 4 test so that we can just work with the default setup of the task. The unit 4 tests are Java classes with methods in them which are annotated with the attest annotation. When the test is executed, the code in this method runs and either passes or fails the test. So what we can see here is that Gradle does not know about the test annotation yet. This is because the JUnit library needs to be a dependency like any other library that we use in our code. Because the tests are located in the test source set, there are specific dependency configurations for dependencies of the source set which are called test implementation, test runtime only, and so on. What we need to do is to define JUnit4 as a test implementation dependency so that it's available at compile time. We can either do that in our build Gradle file or do it in the convention plugin so that it's available automatically for all our projects, which I'll do now in this case. After I added the dependency, the test code is now compiling and we can now run the test task. If we do test execution through the IDE, as I'm doing now, it runs the Gradle test task and picks up the test results to show them to us. We see that our JUnit 4 test was successful. Let's explore what we need to do to switch the standard test task to use JUnit 5 instead of JUnit 4. In the first step, we want to make it run our JUnit 4 tests, which is possible with JUnit 5, so you can mix JUnit 4 and JUnit 5 tests. For example, if you want to migrate from one version to the other. To tell Gradle that we now want to use the JUnit 5 engine, we need to configure the test task directly. Here we say use JUnit platform. If we attempt to run our test now, Gradle will run the JUnit 5 runner and that will complain that there is no test execution engine on the class path. Compared to JUnit 4, JUnit 5 is designed in a modular way where you can have multiple execution engines for your tests. So there is an engine to execute JUnit 5, also called Jupyter tests, and an engine to execute JUnit 4 test, which is called the Vintage Engine. We now add the Vintage Engine to our test runtime class pass by declaring it as test runtime only dependency. If we now run again, we can see how the test executed as earlier. The difference is now that in the background, JUnit 5 was used to run the test. Next, we want to change the test to use JUnit 5 instead of JUnit 4. For that, we replace the test implementation dependency to JUnit 4 with a dependency to the JUnit 5 API. In the case of our rather simple test, we just need to adjust the imports in the test code to use 
the Jupyter annotations and assertion methods instead of the JUnit4 annotations and methods. Oftentimes, you have different types of tests you would like to write. Our example is a typical unit test, where you test a single class or method directly. Other types of tests are integration tests or end-to-end -end tests, where you want to test a larger piece of software in combination. Often these types of tests require different kinds of setups. For example, an integration test or end-to-end -end test might need some additional dependencies to set up a certain environment in which the tests run. As I explained in my video on source sets, the source set concept of Gradle already gives us all the things we need to do these different setups. If we create an additional source set, for instance for integration tests, we can define a different set of dependencies for them. As mentioned, this is all functionality of the source set concept already. The only thing we need to make this a source set that contains test code is to register a test task on top. We do this for our integration test source set. The convention is to give the test task that executes the tests the same name as the source set. So we'll get a task called integration test. In the task we can again state which test framework we want to use and do some more configuration which will be the topic of the next video. Two things we have to do so because this task is created from scratch is configuring the class path for the test execution and the location of the compiled test classes. We get all this from the source set. What we also usually want is that our test code depends on our production code from the main source set. This is done by adding a dependency to the main variant of the project itself. I talked about depending on different variants of a project in the video on feature variants. There may be cases like end-to-end -end tests where you don't directly instantiate classes or call methods, there you might not even need this dependency. So with the setup we can now add a test to our integration test source set. In the test we can use classes from the additional dependency that we defined just for the source set. The IDE also knows about our additional test task that we registered and we can run our test from the integration test source set directly here in the IDE. Sometimes it can also be useful to register several test tasks for one source set. JUnit5 for example allows you to add tags to your tests and then filter by tag. So for our integration tests we could add a second test task called integration test slow and then we can filter the tests in the tasks so that one task runs the tests annotated with slow and the other one all remaining tests. Another use case could be to run all tests but in different environments, for example with a different Java version. We saw that testing with Gradle is basically creating a source set plus setting up a test task plus adding dependency to the test framework and test engine. For the standard test source set, half of the setup is done automatically. If you add a new source set for tests, you need to do all these configurations on top. But since these are things quite common to do in many Java projects, Gradle recently introduced the concept of JVM test suites to make the setup more compact and comprehensive. You can think about a test suite as something layered on top of the source set. For the standard test source set, a test suite called test is automatically set up by the Java plugin. For the test suite, you can then say for an instance to use JUnit Jupyter. This will not only configure the test task associated with the suite to use JUnit 5, but also adds the dependencies to the JUnit 5 API and the execution engine. To make your tests use JUnit 5, you just need to do this one thing and everything else of the setup is already done. If you want to add an additional test suite, like for integration tests in our example, you can create a new test suite like this. This will automatically create the source set in the background so you don't have to do that anymore and then it will add the test task and set up the dependencies. It will by default even use JUnit 5. So if you don't configure anything else here, you'll already have a working setup to execute JUnit 5 tests from your integration test source set. In our example, we also added the dependencies to the main variant and to an additional library. For compactness, you can now directly define these dependencies here inside the JVM test suite setup. However, this is just a different notation. You could also leave the dependency declarations as we did them before. Other things you can do here directly in the test suite definition is changing details of the associated source set, like the folder where the tests are actually in, or details of the associated test tasks. Note the test suites at the moment only allow one test task to be associated with the source set. But as you can see on the notation here, it is already planned to have multiple test tasks that are associated here. Right now if you want an additional task, 
you still have to do it like I showed before, but you can still do everything else through the test suite setup. In the background, configuring a test suite uses the APIs we used directly before. That's all the basics I wanted to show you about the test setup in Gradle and how to configure it. In the next video, we will have a closer look at the implementation of the test task and what Gradle is doing when executing the tests. We we'll look at more configuration options of the test task and how to optimize test execution. If you do not want to miss that, subscribe to this channel. See you then.